2011 Higher Maths Paper 1 Question 23. Part A asks us to solve this trig equation. It involves a cos 2x and it involves a cos x. Different angles, double x and a single x. That's never very good for making progress. So we're focusing on cos 2x and seeing if we can replace that by a different version. A double angle formulae, uh, three different versions of cos 2x. One of them is 2 cos squared x minus 1. Another one is in cos squared x minus sine squared x. A third one is 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And the difficulty then is which of these three versions should we use in here? And the clue is in the scenery that surrounds you. If you look around this equation, you see cos x, you don't see sin x. This version, you see cos x, you don't see sin x's. So it would look like the most productive replacement for cos 2x would be 2 cos squared x minus 1. So let's try that and see what happens. So a little bit of tidying up is needed. We've got a minus 1 plus 2 to uh, tidy up. So we have a, an x squared term, 2 cos squared x minus 1. We have a, a cos x term and minus 1 plus 2 is just plus 1. And we've got a form that looks very much like a quadratic equation. Um, cos squared x, remember, just means cos x squared uh, minus 3 times cos x plus 1 equals 0. So very much like something like 2a squared minus 3a plus 1 equals 0. And the method of solving that type of equation would be to find two factors that multiply together to give us this and then say, well, this factor must be 0 or this factor must be 0. So that would be the method that we'd use. So attempting to factorise uh, this expression, the first multiplied together give us 2 cos squared x. Well, there is no choice. 2 cos x times cos x. And if we look at these last, this times this must give us 1. 1 times 1 gives us 1. Now the problem is the minus 3 cos x. This comes from the outside 2. That's 2 cos x and the inside uh, 2. 1 times cos x. So 2 cos x, 1 cos x. To get minus 3, they'd both be negative. Minus 1 cos x minus 2 cos x gives us minus 3 cos x. Would of course check that the signs are okay with the minus 1 times minus 1 giving us this plus 1. So we've, we've ended up with two factors multiplied together giving us 0. One or other of these factors must be 0. So either 2 cos x minus 1 is equal to 0 or cos x minus 1 is equal to 0. In this case, 2 cos x would be equal to 1 and then divide both sides by 2 cos x equals a half. And in this case, cos x would be equal to 1. Now, cos x equals 1 half. Let's deal with uh, that. And let's assume that the first quadrant is all that we're after. Um, cosine being 1 half, if you, you remember, we don't have calculators in this paper. So let's remember the equilateral triangle of side 2, which we, we chop in half, so this line would be 1, and Pythagoras 2 squared minus 1 squared square rooted would give us a root 3 here. Now that involves a 60 degree angle and a 30 degree angle. And wanting a cosine to be a half, if we're, we're sitting here adjacent over hypotenuse, cosine of 60 is 1 over 2. So x would be equal to 60 or, hey, 
first quadrant all three functions are positive cos sine tan and here only the sine's positive and here only the tan's positive but in the fourth quadrant the cosine's positive so we also have a fourth quadrant angle and if your first quadrant angle is 60 then your fourth quadrant angle will be 360 minus 60 so the other alternative here is 360 minus 60 which is 300 so these are your two possibilities for cosine of an angle being a half a first quadrant angle and a fourth quadrant angle cos x equals one different tack here um, since it's equal to one have a look at the the cosine graph which you should always remember and there's zero there's 360 and you can see from that that cosine of an angle being one will happen at zero and 360 so x equals zero but hey hang on um, 360 is not allowed zero is allowed x can equal this is less than or equal um, this is strictly less than so we're not allowed 360 so the choices or solutions to this equation are x equals 0 60 300 so let's move on now to part b of this question where we have a very similar equation to solve uh, it's very similar to the first equation we solved. The only difference is that this angle 4x is twice this angle of 2x and this angle of 2x is twice this angle of x. Now, in essence, the first part of this question, part A, we solved the equation. Now, I'm going to replace x by theta. Um, cos 2 theta minus 3 cos theta uh, plus 2 equals 0. We solve that to get theta equals 0, 60, 300. That was within the range 0 to 360. Now, it wasn't theta, it was x, as we know. So cos 2x minus 3 cos x plus 2 equals 0 was solved to get x equals these three values, 0, 60, 300. Now, the second equation, the one we're looking at now, if I replace theta by 2x, instead of twice theta, I'll now have twice 2x, which is 4x, that's this, minus 3 times theta, we're now saying is 2x, so that's cos 2x, which is that, plus 2 equals 0. So it's the same equation as this, except with theta being replaced by 2x, theta being replaced by 2x. So to solve this equation, we do what we did in part A, but we'll produce values for 2x, not for x. And there would be one more step, which would involve halving each of these values to actually find what x is. Now here lies the difficulty of the question. There will be values beyond uh, these three uh, that we should be using and halving to bring x back down within the range 0 to 360. It's not 2x now that's in the range 0 to 360. It's still x. So by halving the values of 2x, we will need extra values over here. So we'll have to go back to the solution of this equation, in, a, in essence this one, and see where all these solutions came from. Now, if you recall, you can go back in the video, but they came from cos theta being one half, and that's where the values of 60 and 300 came from. And these were the first two values in a repeating cyclic pattern of values there was one 60 degrees cosine of 60 degrees is one half there was a second one 
that was the 360, there's 360, 360 minus the 60, so that gave us these two. And here will be a third, and here will be a fourth in the next uh, 360 degree cycle for cosine. Um, so we would be adding 360, adding 360 to each of these to get the next two. So 360 onto this would be 420, and 360 onto this would be 660. And so it would go on, there'd be another cycle, etc. Um, the other value came from, and this one, the zero, came from cos theta equals one, which gave it a zero. The next one up, there's cos value of one, this is at 360, and then there would be the next one, 720, and so on. So, translating all this to the 2x case, cos of 2x being a half would give us 2x being 60, 300, 420, 660, and so on. To half, halving these to get the value of x would give us 30, 150, 210, 330, the next cycle, if we half the next two values, we'd get something more than 360. We're only, in this case, wanting values up to 360. So there are four values appearing. Also, this one, where we're looking at cos 2x equals 1, that's producing values of 2x, which are 0, 360, 720, and so on, giving a value of x, 0, when we half it, uh, 180 when we half it, and 360 when we half it, but we don't want 360. This is a strictly less than, so x being 360 is not allowed. So these are the only two. So altogether, summing up, the values that we're after are 0, 30, 150, just putting them in numerical order now, 180, 210, and 330.